Welcome to another Universal Connection Radio episode of Star Shaman with our very special shaman, Mary Ducina. Um, today's episode is going to be focusing not only on, of course, the 12 star signs, but we are in Leo, and Leo has such strength. Hi, Mary. Hello, Roxanne, and welcome stargazers, uh, uh, our, our wonderful celestial family and tribe of those who have already endeavored to set their frequencies, their vibrations, their energy modus operandi toward the light, with the light. And every time we get together, and I know I can speak for Roxanne on this, it is our intention yes. that that golden, healing, violet, white light of all and anything that's sacred and heaven to earth is our intention to even get together and do any type of these broadcasts for you. So if you'll just close your eyes for just a second and whatever's been stressing you out, if you've been affected by the, the type of hateful vibrations that are being spewed off the media and the televisions and this one's opinion and that one's condemnation, let's just let that go. Let's just realign and calibrate ourselves to the magnificent, and as Roxanne stated with Leo, strong heroes of light that we are. It's Leo time. And when we endeavor to understand Leo, that is the I am that I am, the royal lioness and the lion that we are with strength and courage and backbone and conviction and the responsibility to align ourselves, we have to choose with our creator, God-gifted free will. We must choose. Choose. It's a gift. Choose to align our soul with the higher frequencies of divinity and spirit. So you have a soul in your temple and you must choose, regardless of what seems to be flying around in the world of ideas, thoughts, or propaganda, no matter what's going on in the news, it's our job now, it's Leo. And it's our job now to be heroes and warriors of the good, champions, champions of the cause of love's frequency. And that's just what I wanted to open with. So thank you for breathing that in, exhaling that, and becoming one with it. Thank you for that. Absolutely. That was beautiful, Mary. And Scooby was coughing in the background. I'm always welcome with animal totems. Thank you, Scooby. Love my dogs. Love my cats. Love them. Yes, she always gets involved. <laughs> so, um, yes, I absolutely agree with you, Mary. We are very powerful, very powerful. And the most important thing for us to remember is it is within our power to avoid these conversations, the media, anything negative which brings our frequency down we are of higher frequency and as we were laughing about earlier yes god does not like ugly i don't do ugly i don't do ugly so we <laughs> keep it on the up and up we raise our vibrations and if you see somebody who's caught in that state you don't have to tell them no don't be there don't this don't that just be on the higher vibration and they will hop on. They will. Lead by example. Always. You can, you can lead by the mystery platform, as I call it. A lot of times I work with the sacred mysteries that we learn as metaphysicians, life coaches, meditation teachers, uh, bringing people into alignment. I think when you take it to the point of just the facts, ma'am, just the facts, no matter what's going on in our daily world, no matter what high tides, when the tide's in, it's in. When the tide's out, it's out. I believe whether it's a vast tsunami of good fortune or something shocking, some type of shocking news hits you, you know, that, that wild day where the medical report is not what we thought it or hoped it would be. Mm -hmm. It puts us on a point. You know, I had a mystical teacher when I was in my teens say to me, pain is a great teacher, you know. And I took a pause. It was before we were going to meditate. And I said, say that to me one more time. And he said, pain. When pain enters your life, 
physical pain's immediate. He said, no matter what's going on in your life, good, bad, or ugly, <laughs> he said, pain will get your attention. You will stop in the moment because mm -hmm. pain has entered in your frequency. And I said, absolutely. And he said, so when we become cognizant that pain doesn't have to be our main teacher, you know, the proverbial, they had to get hit over the head with the psychic baseball bat before they paid attention. Mm -hmm. Make a decision because it is your I am, I will, I will not. When you make a decision that it doesn't have to, you know, when you don't decide, then you get willy nilly. You get the pain, you get the shock, you get the betrayal, you get the, you know, the enabling, the addict, all that stuff orbits around you because ultimately we learn from every experience. The, the good, bad, the shocking, the I never saw that one coming. We still, in retrospect, as we look back, every person that lied or stole or was false-faced or dominant, or they all are like on a chessboard, and we're moving away from those type of strategies, those type of manipulations, either that we've done ourselves, oh, yes, let's own it here. Either we've been the betrayer, we've been the one that maybe unwillingly, had to be the one that delivered that message. You know, you're just not the relationship for me. You're a wonderful person. I'm just not that woman. I'm just not that guy. Or I think we're going our separate ways because I think we've extracted the best of each other. And it's not a bad or a good thing. We're just done. That's it. We're just done. That is it. And also, Mary, the funny thing about it is we take our lives way too serious. All of this we take way too serious. We're supposed to be having fun. Yes. And Leo, uh, to that point, one of my favorite, most engaging metaphysical skill sets that I not only love to be around, and it, it talk about quenching a thirst in this, in this realm, in this dimension, is humor. And not, not any kind of, of sarcasm that, that hurts anyone or maligns anyone so you can be in the spotlight and and get the attention, everybody laughs at the sake of someone else's pain. No, God don't like it. No. But when we, but when we engage in lightening up, you know, lighten up the spirit of play, we've now entered Leo on July 22nd. And I thought we might open this. I know I like this when I'm reading my astrological journals, the chronological timelines of what's the big enchilada energy, the dates coming up late July and August. I think that's nice to have that in the front piece Absolutely. Of a oh, yes. So, that That's a heads up. Hey, work with this. It's there for yeah. you to work with. Yes. So as you're listening, I suggest you get your little appointment book. So your notepad and your pen right now or hit your smartphone recorders, because here's in a nutshell, the celestial sky world emphasis points. These are these are the big energy medicine days as we go forth from the third week of July, that really the final week of July on into when we speak again after. August the 22nd. So what's happening now is tied to a phenomena that's going to happen in 2017. And I'm bringing it from this point to 2017. So I have you write that down in your journals. I don't care if you put it on your refrigerator or you put it somewhere where it won't just get lost in the drawer. There is a rare solar eclipse that hasn't happened in over 100 years that's going to go across the face of the United States, of this country, of America, North America. And it's going to be around the third week of August in 2017, around the 20th, 21st. Eclipses don't just all bloom out on the day that they happen. They're very much in effect six months prior, and they bloom out six months to a year afterwards. But I'm just, for the sake of chronological impact, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you that it's coming in the eighth month of 2017, around the third week of August. So we're going to, yes, absolutely start feeling that at the end of February 2017. So I'll, I'll summarize that by saying the big news of 2017 is that Leo solar eclipse. Having said that, starting on July 26th of 2016, now we're back to right now, starting on the, the final week of July 2016, we have opened what's known as to the Egyptian hierarchy and the ancient elders and their and their philosophical beliefs and truth teachings like the Egyptian Book of the Dead and to the Mayans who talked about when these wheels within wheels start to turn in these new cycles, these grand big cycles, one phase ends, 
and a big monumental wheel of fortune of fate starts. The Mayans and the Egyptians both concurred on the Lion's Gate, the Lion's Portal. The big date for that is August the 8th annually. But the bigger portal that opens up is every nine to 10 years. So we're opening a new Wheel of Fortune and Wheel of Fate this year. In 2016, the portal started to open July 26th, and we're well into Leo, and we even had a trio of Leo, Mercury, how we work with our words, how we write, how we learn, what ideas inspire us, and what we have to let go of as far as debilitating beliefs. That's Mercury, the messenger. All right. Mercury's in Leo. Venus is still in Leo. Venus has got to do with our aptitude to be beautiful souls, beautiful in our expression, the spirit of entertainment and play and, and romantic flirting with life and letting life flirt with us. The sun, Mercury, Venus, a trio of Leo, as the portal opens for the next nine to 10 years, so 2016 into 2026, open on July 26. The full impact of that is happening until August the 12th as we're coming into the full moon and Saturn going direct and things like that, you know, as we roll toward that 13th to the 18th big full moon in Aquarius, which is a partial eclipse. What does that mean? Leo and everything, if you get on your computers, and I would suggest that you get on your computers and just type in on YouTube or type in on the internet, the lion's gate, and you'll come up with a gal, its last name is F-E-N-N, Cecilia Fenn, and she helps take you through chronological history about the lion's gate. Nice. But the lion is the king of beasts. In our Milky Way galaxy, the, the sun is our great star. It's our life force enhancer, the sun, the greatest, biggest star. So the sun rules the sign of Leo, the, the, uh, the fifth sign of the zodiac. So we've gone from late June and July of feeling the pangs of our needs, where we need to be nurtured, where we may be overly protective of something else or someone else in our orbits, you know, acting like the mother or the father to a relationship that really kind of needs to carry its own weight and do its own part. As of July 22nd, we entered the sign of Leo, the most powerful time of the year where the sun is dancing with Mother Earth. Father Sky and Mother Earth are in a wonderful dance right now. So chronologically, the lion's portal is now open. And these days, July 26th, especially 8-8, August the 8th, and then again the portal starts, the gate starts to slowly close on August the 12th. And then we get to look at where we might be in our own way or receive some fortunate blessings by the wonderful Aquarian partial eclipse full moon that builds then running from the 14th to the 18th of August. So our new moon finds us on August 1st and 2nd. With the new moon, we not only have the energetics of our messenger Mercury and our lovely goddess Venus Aphrodite and our powerful sun, life force enhancer, these are all very fortunate vibrations. Leo lights up a room. Let your light shine. And I think about Rihanna's song, shine bright like a diamond, shine bright like a diamond. So these are the diamond Merkaba frequency codes. This is golden and white light. And the other color of Leo, the amethyst, violet, crystalline flames. We are being encoded. So there is, there is a vast intensity that's ramped up between July 22nd and before we get to the full moon over the 17th, 18th of August of the intensity of the divisiveness. And the reason sometimes we see these extremes and frequencies of, of those ascribing mainly to the dark because maybe they've lost hope or they don't feel like anything's working for them. Hope is an important faith fuel. Then they just start like falling into the shadowlands, into the darkness. Well, I can't get the attention I want. I can't get the things I want. So I'm just going to go grab them and take them and I'll, I'll get famous by what I do. They'll look at me then. We still have a choice with our frequencies and we are spirit having a human experience. It's just one dimension of our profoundness as sacred signatures of spirit. Our soul just needs to be reminded that we do have, as we do Earth School 101, 
that constant choice, choose the light, choose the light, choose the light. The light is mighty because it's right. So in your spiritual codes, August the 1st and 2nd is going to reveal to you how you've been sitting down at your sacred table at your altars of the Holy Ghost, of if you're Buddhist, if you're into Native American and you're talking to the Creator and Wonka Tonkin and the great mystery and all that's sacred, if you're whatever you are, but are you walking the walk? And so your higher mysteries want to reveal to you as we roll through this lion's portal, the opening of the gate from July 26th to August the 12th. In that process, the new moon where the sun and the moon will marry and emphasize the brilliant light of Leo is going to be happening. And this new moons are always seed planting times. There are always times of initiation. And take that word for a moment into your spirit. I'm going to be initiated in my annual 12-month turning of the wheel, my wheel of fortune, my wheel of fate. I'm now in that sacred crystalline throne chair, and everything that's holy and divine by my choosing, by my signature, by what I choose to ask to imbue me, what I'm summoning, by my own willpower, by my own creator-gifted, God-gifted free will, as I sit on my throne in the fifth sign of the zodiac, in the flavor, in the components of Leo, heroes, champions of causes, generous, forceful strength and empowerments, temples of light, where might I direct and receive? It's very important that you receive these light codes. I'm going to sit, not unconsciously, I'm going to sit here with the breezes of change and the mighty winds of the almighty, and I'm going to, by my own free will, allow the I am, the all that is and the I am to encode me. So any of these days between July 26th and August the 12th, but particularly on the evening of August 7th and the entire 24-hour period of August the 8th, 2016, is our preview of the majesty and the grace and the glory clouds and mercy that's entering our life as early as January the 21st, 2017, because that's when Aquarius, Leo's balance sign, the, the, the yang-yang, actually, they're both masculine signs. When we get to Aquarius early in 2017, the blessings start. The cornucopia is full. The harvest of your sacredness and your intentions and everything that you do with the law of attraction starts to give you exactly what you've been putting out there. So my suggestion is a mystic, more than an astrologer. Astrology is the timeline. The energy alchemy is the summoning of spirit into your soul. And if I had to pick one, I'll choose I'll choose learning the mysteries of grace and sacred and, and my beloved sacred spirit and my Holy Ghost over just calculating planets and stars while I live here because I'm not just limited to here at all. I'm not from here. So I get it. I'm functioning here. My soul knows. My spirit knows. It's forever and always. So this is a time to envision yourself sitting in that golden throne, receiving the golden light, the white light, the violet flame, the violet radiating rays, the Merkaba, which means spirit body of light. It's always in motion. And allow anything that you need to let go of, anything that you want purged out of you in harmony, in harmony, and in grace, like listening to a beautiful song. That's the kind of throne that we sit on, on August the 8th. And it starts astrologically. It started July 22nd and gets amplified as we get to the new moon when our grandmother moon, the feminine aspect, the yin, and our beloved father son both join hands and dance in harmony. The moon and the sun are one at a new moon, at the lunation of a new moon. So it's known as the wishing moon three days out. Every new moon, three days prior to the actual new moon of August 2nd, for example, three days prior, is called the balsamic phase of the moon. And that's when you'll find people doing magic, casting intentions, burning their sage and their sweet grass and their copal, getting their essential oils out of frankincense and lavender and rosemary. They're cleansing, they're clearing the air that they wear. And what they're breathing and what they're exhaling is what they're breathing in and they're letting go of. So I would just suggest to you that it doesn't cost anything really 
financially for you to sit down sometime on the new moon, the 1st and 2nd of August, or on the 7th and 8th of August, and receive what sacred gifts are coming into the atmosphere and the orbits around us anyway. That's the chronological part of it. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mary, but that applies to each and every one of us, not just Leo. Yeah, it's the Leo imbuements. Each month we get an injection. Mm -hmm. We get a celestial injection like a B12 shot. And our nerves and our cellular structure and our our molecular and our atomic and the ancient of days of us, our foreverness and our always come into the now. And so on a multidimensional level, network of frequencies when we align with our conscious mind ah it's leo i listen to roxanne and mary and it's time for me to settle down settle down now and it's time for me to take a few moments for the higher good of myself and it's this is the best time the optimal time in the earth timeline in my time zone for me to sit down and receive the benefits of leo regardless of my sign wonderful we all have that we all have each sign in our in our own star charts. You know, you may be born in April, you may be born in October, but Leo's in there somewhere. So when we change signs each month, it's not just yay because it's your birthday month. It's a spotlight, and a lighthouse, really. Showers of blessings and light are coming forth through the filter and the alchemy of that particular zodiac sign. Leo is fire. Fire is enthusiastic. So it makes it a more favorable time frame for Aries and Sagittarius to figure it out, to let go and face and do reality checks because it's a harmonious cycle for you. Best time, you're favored. If something's got to go or something's got to break up or you need to break away, this is an optimal cycle for you. Optimal. If If you're a Cancer or a Capricorn, this new moon coming in is saying you're absolutely at the best time of the entire 12 months of 2016, Leo's the good magic. There's good magic around you for you to improve your finances. Now a piece of that for Capricorn and Cancer might be, you gotta say goodbye to something that you're pining about or stuck on or locked up with. Wah, 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 it didn't go the way I decided it should have and they should have respected me and they didn't come through with their part of the bargain. Move on, move on, stop leashing yourself and tethering yourself and putting yourself in a spider web that you can't get out of where well, you can, but convincing yourself that you can't cut yourself free from deleterious energies. It starts with our will and you better believe Leo and the tarot Leo has to do with the suit of wands, the fire element. So it has to do with, I have a magic wand at my disposal. My word is my wand. How I cast my will is my magic wand how I work with the silent mysteries and just shape shift things in my world because I'm taking command. Leo's the leader of the army. In the army of my possibilities, in the army possibilities of my victories, or whether I've been a victim, I am now the general. I'm the CEO. I'm I'm the chief financial officer of my mood and how I send forth my energy. So it's time for Leo strategy. That's probably a better way to put it. Mm -hmm. Each month, a different kind of strategic platform and leo's platform is up front i've entered the room let me just tell you about my light let me tell you about how i can bring enthusiasm to the table let me tell you how i'm not disappointed about the past i'm not upset about what didn't happen yet maybe there was a delay but a delay is a maybe it's not a no it's a not now Mm -hmm. that's leo leo's like you know what i'm more than this i'm bigger than this it's brighter than this so what so what Let's go. So Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, happy, happy birthdays and New Year's to Leo's. This is a powerful time of taking command and only working with the law of attraction, the the realm of setting your intentions. You better only focus that energy beam on what you do want. And, And certainly recognize as you sit on that throne of intentions, certainly recognize where you yourself and and yourself, you yourself and I have been maybe guilty guilty, let's not get into shame or blame, but guilty of focusing in your self-talk on, well, he did that and she did that and they should, they didn't respect me and how dare they not do that? Get out of it. Get out of it. That's the shadows. That's the shadows trying to equalize your life. And that it's time for us to 
to take responsibility. If you want to see peaceful frequencies in the world, become the mighty leader. And, you know, it's a full-time job to monitor your own frequency. So why don't you just start there? Why don't yeah. you start with reality checks and, and the peaceful the way of the peaceful, peace-filled warrior? We can always tell by the way we're feeling. If yes. you're feeling ill at ease, you know you're not on the right frequency. It doesn't work. It, so it, get out of it. That's absolutely correct. And on July 30th, Mercury, our messenger that we spoke about, will shift from being in the trio of Leo. It'll move into Virgo. And as it moves into Virgo, it's going to help bless us with taking care of business and taking care of the details. And it starts to favor the Earth signs. So you Virgos, you Capricorns, and you Taurus people out there, things start to get easier for you again. It becomes to, it becomes valuable for you to trust your own gut instincts. And, and we'll speak more about that in just a moment. So the full moon, the lion's portal, we're in a massive cycle of intuitiveness, psychic acumen, dream symbols, animal totems, shape-shifting. If we had to do a little quiz with ourselves to do an energy check with ourselves, right now this month I feel like I identify with this particular creature or beast or bird or insect or color. You know, start, you know, I just did a, a lecture um, last month, a, a live lecture, and one of the things I had the people do is I said, get out a piece. I supplied the paper and I said, write down as quickly as you can an answer to what I say. When I was a child, Leo also rules children and the power of the inner child. When I was a child, I said, when I grow up, I'm going to be a uh, fill in the blank. And just write these things down. Don't even take time to analyze them. My favorite color was, my favorite color is, so you're doing then and now. Mm -hmm. My biggest fear when I was young, as, as far back as I can remember, the thing that scared me the most was what really made me angry in my childhood or my teenage was what really made me the most happy and I it always brought me joy when I was younger was what I feel my purpose is beyond my job, beyond the paycheck I bring home, beyond the relationships I've had. I really feel like that my sole mission is involved with, and that might be animals, it might be children, it might be elderly people, it might be, I love being a homemaker, it doesn't matter. This isn't about judging, it's about going along that list and looking at that, and looking at that. And then the final one I gave them was, at this point, in my now-based consciousness, I really want to be more involved with fill in the blank. And nice. if you do that, what it does is it, it does a timeline. You become a time traveler and you're going back into your inner child, into your teenage years. You know, you know, you quickly, if you do it quickly, then it's coming up from your super conscious and your subconscious rather than the mind going, no, oh, let me think about this. I'm kind of a, this is a trick question. Don't overthink it. Just do it. Just do it. And then kind of look at that afterwards. And it helps you have a, an outline of what you want to work at. Wow, isn't that interesting? I thought I'd say my favorite color was purple because I've always loved it, but aqua came through. So yeah. I need to look up and resonate with aqua. That's see, wonderful, so, Mary. That's yes, really so wonderful. What? That's something that uh, in coaching we do. Is and, it? Yes, definitely, because the quick answers are the truth. It's where you're They're, at. The like, instant magic. Yeah, you don't have time to think of an answer. It just comes. Well, the other big shift that's coming with fast, like arrows, being being let go out of the bow, uh, you know, because last year I remember, last year and the year before that, I remember the big deal at the movies was the Hunger Games. I never went to see the movie okay. because I, I had teenagers that could tell me about it, but because I didn't like the angst of this fear mongering and this human survival and pitting the humans against, against each other. Against each other, yes. I didn't like it either. Yeah, so I just didn't go. I, I vote with my dollars. That's what I do. I vote with my energy presence and I vote with my dollars. And I simply don't, just because it's a popular movie, I don't have to rush to be the one in the crowd of people all getting that subliminal programming. That's I only right. go if my, my intuition says, this is good energy. This is something that helps the world. So I don't let Hollywood or anything in the world influence me because your eyes are your windows of the soul. What you're watching on the internet, the television, 
what you're focusing on, the type of post on Facebook or Twitter or what you're analyzing on YouTube. All of that energy matters because what are you doing? You're using your God creator gifted free will to invest in it. Why? Because you're paying attention. Yeah. It's you're capturing. absorbing, absorbing yeah. it. Oh my God. You're, yes. You're capturing. It's capturing your attention because you can't say it any other way except I'm paying attention to this. Don't talk. I'm paying attention to this movie. I want to watch this television show. And what it is, is it's a soft hypnosis. I'm trained in hypnosis and, and past yes. life regression. Yes. And it's, it's, it's a form of soft hypnosis. People say, what? When you're driving a car, you're in a form of soft hypnosis. And the fastest way without spending a lengthy time on that is that when you're driving somewhere, every time you come up to that traffic light, you're not saying to yourself, I must put my foot on the accelerator. I must put my foot on the brake now. I need to turn the signal on with my right hand. You just go. Mm -hmm. Because you've learned it. You've been imprinted. You've been encoded. So I'm just suggesting that it's time when it comes to Roxanne's point about frequencies and the good, bad, and the ugly. God, don't do ugly. <laughs> out in the world. God, I'm going to do ugly. Then what you need to do is take responsibility yourself. Instead of blaming and criticizing, pull back. And take responsibility like a Leo warrior, like a Leo commander, and say, in my army of greatness, in the army of the almighty supernatural favor and forces of the supreme creator, God, Holy Ghost, I am going to have my army directed by the I am that I am, the almighty, what is, forever and always. So for your signs... No, astrology doesn't rule you, and your chart doesn't rule you, and I'm going to say it again and again. It isn't something you believe in. It's not a religion. Mm -hmm. Never was meant to. It's a personality map. So you can choose which road you go down, always. So on that new moon, on August the 1st, 2nd, Mars will get back into the fire sign of Sagittarius. Ooh, Leo loves that. Leo loves it, some Sagittarius and some Aries. We've got Uranus and Aries. So we've got Uranus, Uranus. The planet that has to do with revolution. We're sensing a lot of that out there. You know, like mm -hmm. we're talking about the Bernie Sanders revolution, that he started a revolution. So we're seeing revolving orbits, revolutions. We're seeing revolving orbits of energy starting to coagulate in like a whirlpool or a tornado. It's wanting to try to spin. So you have to decide, is that an orbit that you want to spin in or is it a spin zone trying to get you captured up in the fray and the anxiety of it? Choice is yours. Choice is yours. So Mars and Sagittarius. Sagittarius is that arrow, which I started to say in reference to the Hunger Games. It's the arrow and it's Diana, goddess of the moon. It's like a Joan of Arc or a Mother Teresa or, or a Gandhi. It's got to do with my will is my arrow. Mm -hmm. What I will do and what I will not do, because Sagittarius is the epitome of, of personal freedom and, and the quest, the vision quest of the white knight or the quest for truth and how it, you can apply it and make that philosophy your, your footsteps. You know, your, where are your footprints going? Where's your signature of energy going? So when Mars gets back into Sagittarius, it's leaving Scorpio and Taurus alone for a while. Yay. And as it goes into Sagittarius, it's flying the eyes wide open of all you Sagittarians and Geminis out there and secondary to the Virgos and Pisces. These are called the mutable signs. So the flavor gets intensified at the new moon of August the 2nd, especially for Virgos. Virgos are going to go into a very deep pool of understanding. It's spiritual. It's psychological. You're diving deep into your psyche if you're playing it smart because it's your time of healing sanctuary. Everything in your life needs to become holistic. What you're eating, what are you eating for energy? What are you eating that fuels you or drains you if you're a Virgo? And, and, and I'd say Pisces, that goes for you too. If there needs to be the dentist or the doctor, if there needs to be the massage or the reflexology, if there needs to be those self-nurturing moments, please, Virgo, number one, take those moments for yourself, take care of you. Second to that of all the signs, Pisces, pull back from the social masses, pull back from putting too many things on your schedule. Because for Virgo, it's the month before your birthdays. You know, it's like when we start Leo from July 22nd to August the 21st. That starts the sign before Virgo. So whether you're in August or a September born Virgo, Leo is the sign before yours. So you are, in the short form of the story, you're cooking in the womb and you're about to be born. 
So by August the 21st, 22nd, the relief comes for Virgo. Not so much. Are things going to just jump into your lap easily if you're a Virgo this month? It's your time to divine. It's your time to get your tea leaves red, you know, or or uh, do some type of oracle or get your hands in the dirt and plant something or fertilize it or enjoy the fruits that you're growing. It's time for Virgo to take to be the hermit, just like in the tarot. The ninth card in the major arcana is Virgo. It's mm-hmm. the hermit. So it's their time to enjoy what's really wanting to be revealed to them, if you're Virgo or Pisces, from the mystical forces of the all that is. So ceremony, fire ceremonies, water ceremonies, working with crystals, all of that's very favorable. Uh, Taking a nutrition class, if you're a Virgo or a Pisces, learning why. If you have pain in your body, learn what that pain means, whether you go into uh, Alice Stedman's Who's the Matter with Me book or Louise Hay, I can heal myself. It's time to go into that if you're a Virgo or a Pisces. Why is the energy crystallizing and making that shoulder or that neck or those hips or the feet hurt? Look into that because you'll get the message. And as you learn the message, wow, isn't that interesting? The pain domain disappears. Pain can be a powerful teacher. I don't choose it. I had to wake up to that. I don't want pain to be my teacher. I want humor and laughter and generosity and harmony and, and and just the joy of life. I want to I want to hear it from joy and love. I want those cousins to come to my party. I want those energies to be invited to my life theater. And I don't want to have shame, blame, guilt, greed, need, any of those. You know, I, I don't want those things to come to my life party. They're not on my stage. You cannot see me, Mary, but I am smiling. <laughs> yes. Thank you. For that. Thank the you. inner smile, the inner smile, the mm-hmm. inner smile. Inner landscape, you're the most magical person you'll ever fall in love with. So get to know him and her, get to know them. So the full moon, as a partial eclipse, makes it a a bit stronger than a regular full moon that comes around. When you've got eclipses or, 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 you know, super moons, they're stronger. This one's in Aquarius. I cannot tell you what a great couple of days, the 17th and the 18th, especially if you're on a, a recognition point of your frequencies, what you're sending out there. And you're flowing good with your intuition about don't do that. Yeah, do this. This feels right. Like Roxanne was talking about, the barometer is how you're feeling, what's what you're sensing. So you don't just go along with the crowd. If your intuition says, no, 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 I don't want to do that. If you're getting the dolphin, eh, 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 then listen. <laughs> the dolphin totem's talking to you. No, 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 no. So on the 18th, 17th and the 18th, music is favored in dance and and just, you know, that great dinner, that fabulous glass of wine or homemade moonshine, if you're into that, or the, the you know, the, having a, a, a potluck where the people that you know don't drain your energy, everybody brings something that's their favorite thing to make. And you just sit down with those four people or you sit down with those, you know, that couple or you sit down with that, that friend and you just say, you're, you're my most favorite person to have lunch with and to enjoy the sunset with and to let the stars come up. It really needs to be a couple of nights that you set aside that are special. This full moon is about an alchemical bath. The moonlight in Aquarius is futuristic. And as far as time travelers, it allows us to journey forward in our spaceships of our consciousness. So it's very uh, high tech. Uh, there's no there's no boundaries. There's There's no borders. It's just like... Wow, as far as I want to be a time traveler and Doctor Who and, and everything that I can do, I have no limits. I, I'm a doctor without borders. I can go do whatever I want to do. I would simply suggest for all of us, and I'm taking responsibility too to be mindful of this. I've already got it written down as, as part of my meditation and prayer. This full moon, it only happens once in Aquarius this year, this full moon. And it's important for us to send that light into our future life, into our future generations, grandkids, their, to our children's children's children, you know, um, um, seven generations forward minimum, blessing the planet Earth, her sustainability, blessing our galaxy, blessing whatever uh, gracious life is out there in the myriad of universes out there. That's all Aquarius. Aquarius is David Bowie's star man. It's space stuff. It's out there and it's all available. So don't be surprised if you don't have some really inventive ideas or visions that come through on the 17th and the 18th. If, if you choose with your conscious will to set aside either one of those nights 
either one of those sunsets, twilights, nights, into allowing that to be a vision quest experience by a fire, by the water, on a boat, laying down on the ground underneath the stars. I'm telling you, there's magic out there, besides all the meteor showers that are starting to happen as we go into the, the first part of August. So I'm going to run through your signs real quick. We already talked about Aries having joviality and flirting with life and a playfulness. And, and with Aries, I would say that you must embody the best version of yourself. Aries is the I am, where Taurus is the I have. So Aries is the ram and the first sign of the zodiac. The beginning of the mystic's new year is spring equinox. So for Aries right now, it's about, this is the first fire sign that's happened in 2016 since Aries. So whatever Aries was thinking about or frustrated about even, in the third week of March, now you've got a launch pad and the rocket's in its sequence to go. T minus 14 minutes. So the launch sequence has started and the steam's happening at the base of, of the rockets. They're powering up. The turbines are beginning to test on the runway of the jets that are getting ready to take off from the particular airport. So I would say for Aries and Sagittarius and Leos, it's vision quest time. And there's the fire of desire and enthusiasm going on with those three fire signs good for you, go after your dreams. If you're a Taurus, you're in the south part of the medicine wheel, and this is where we come to know our immediate bio family, uh, it, it, the people that have raised you, the aunts and the uncles and the grandparents and the, and the extended family. It has to do with, is it flowing in your domestic environment or is it, is it frustrated? So for Taurus, because Taurus is the bull, Elsie the cow or the bull, their totem is definitely, I want to be in my pasture, just want to eat, I want to be left alone. This is my pasture, this is my stuff, I have this, this is my world. So Taurus can be a bit resistant to you trying to get them to change their rules or their boundaries or their mind until they're ready to do so. It's a bull, it's a cow, it's a calf, it's a heifer. So it's just happy with the simple things in life. So I would say with, with Taurus, perhaps... This is your best cycle of 2016, really, because it's Leo, and Leo's an uplifting sign. This is your best cycle to be on the side, have the intention to resolve any conflicts or past crisis wounds or frustrations, or I'm going to cut you off because I didn't like how you dealt with me, or you cut me off, so now I don't talk to you anymore. So Taurus can shape shift. They can move from those low frequencies into a higher light as we move up until the 22nd of August. And that may re require some compromise. Not always easy for the fixed signs of Leo, Taurus, Aquarius, and Scorpio. They're leaders. They don't, they don't let people pull them around by the ring in the nose. So, you know, it's, they may have a pierced nose, but you're not going to pull that piercing. You know, they're, they're going to go willingly or you're going to get the horns of the bulls, what's going to happen. And then they can get sullen and they can get quiet and they can give you the silent treatment. So if you're a Taurus... Focus those energies on, examine, look around you in your home, in your apartment, in, in, on the boat, in the trailer, in the townhouse. Are you happy with the frequencies that are going on in your home? If not, seek to improve that, both in yourself as well as how you exterior do exterior uh, elimination of too much clutter or mm -hmm. paint the room mm -hmm. a different color. If you're a Gemini or a Sagittarius, for Gemini, this is a learning curve with inspiration. It's a third house vibration. It's got to do with conversations are key. Your conversations and your word power can Excuse open me. doors for you. With Leo, it can open doors. So I would say, for Gemini, I'd say the only warning, because it's so good, even the full moon, the only warning I want to give Gemini, and if I don't spend a lot of time on your sign, it's because you've got a green light. So Gemini, you got a green light. But the only caution, yellow light, I would give Gemini is, be mindful not to say too much. Be mindful not to say too much. Don't do the overkill. If you're a cancer, it's your money. It's got to do with your values. It's got to do with positive developments are coming. I see uh, uh, pioneering aspects with new ways of resource and money and income and getting involved in things that you're happy to be involved with working with. So I do see positive developments going in especially into august uh if if being cancer the crab 
you're really cutting the ties with the past. You're moving situations and people away from you that are draining too much energy. I cannot emphasize that enough for you moon child cancer people that just had your birthdays in late June and July. It's time to enter this new year with a full embrace, not allowing other people to hold your ankle going, don't go, don't go, see it my way, do it my way. Bye bye now. God don't do ugly. <laughs> so it's about casting away the frustrations of the fear of being held back. <clears throat> Cancer is a very nurturing sign. They know what it's like to feel hurt because they're shy. They keep a lot of things inside of themselves. So it's hard for them to ever think that they're going to be a part of hurting that guy or that girl. It's like they try to escape without hurting anybody's feelings. Okay, so then just make the move. Use less words. Take more action. Leo, happy birthday. Um, all I'm going to say about you, Leo, is there's so much stuff going on with Leo that if you've had an addiction, if you've had an affliction, if you've had a certain eclipse emotionally <clears throat> come into your life since February of 2016, your birthday, your solar new year, the solar return as it's called, when the sun returns to the same mathematical degree as the time you landed your, your first breath on Earth, this is a time to really embrace fresh starts. So if that means you're going to a Al-Anon meeting, if that means you're going to adjust your diet finally and gain the weight you need to, don't hear that much, do you? Or lose the weight that you want to. Again, it's the focus on is your energy moving in the direction. And you already know, Leo, you already know what needs to be done. You don't need me to tell you. You already know. You're in the east, the dawning of the medicine wheel and the sacred medicine wheel of fate, of light. You're at the eagle position. Whenever you enter a medicine wheel ceremony, you enter through the east. You enter at the dawning, at the beginning. You are smudged and saged in the east. You enter and you exit through the east portal, the east gate. Can't tell you how powerful that is for you, Leos. You've got a blend of the lion and our country's great totem, the eagle. And United States is a cancer, July 4th. So United States just came out of its feely, vulnerable, defensive, on the offensive time. It just started to lighten up on July the 22nd. Now we're in the sign of the lion. That eclipse is in the sign of the lion in 2017. I predict America and the United States is coming back. It's rising. The things that have been caution flags since you know 2001 and 2008, we stopped that portal. That portal that was from 1998 into 2008, that Mayan cycle is done. From 2008 to 2016, that's a portal that's now closed. As I talked about with the Lion's Gate and the portal, nine to 10 years, the new one opens right now. We're in it right now as we do this broadcast. Right now, the Lion's Radiations is opening to affect your next nine to 10 years. You're listening to this, your next 10 years. What's the vision you want for your country where you live, wherever you are on the planet, for how you want to spread your light, how you want to share sacred medicine and magic, become, become that ma magician, become that alchemist, become that doctor feel good, become that person that makes a difference with how you exude your energy into the world and how you micromanage your own stuff. God don't like ugly. So it's time for us to take the energy sword. Energy. I love you, Mary. Yeah, the energy chalice. You know, we need to have communion right now with the showers of blessings and the baptism of light. That's Leo. So to, to finish with the signs, right now, Leo's and Cancer and Leo's and America. America has the lion as its signature totem already sending energy waves in from August of 2017. Mark my words. Start looking at world news. In February of 2017, our country is great. Our country and our people have strong hearts. Leo rules the heart. Aquarius rules the circulation. What energies are you circulating by your words, by your will, by your actions? This is the responsibility for all of us with the Leo and Aquarius in our chart of what we take forward from July of 2016 all the way into August, late August of 2017. What are you circulating? Stop the gossip. Stop the criticism. Don't pay attention to it and invest your energies into it. Be that progressive change. Be that 
magic wand that's walking with the footprint in this world guided by heaven, heaven to earth. That's what's happening right now. We talked about Virgo. Virgo, I'm going to just reiterate, you're in a reclusive, solitude, take care of yourself mode. You need to do that. You need to be incubating and recalibrating your energies. It's your cycle to get tuned up. And whatever experts do that for you, take care of yourself. If you're a Libra, Libras, Libras are the opposite signs of Aries, and they're also in a social cycle. Libras are, are totally focused on expanding their social networks. So Libra, just go do what you normally want to do anyway. Libras love to be a team. They don't like to be alone although they've got their alone period coming up in September. <laughs> Next month, Libra, I'm telling you, it's your recluse cycle. Get ready. So get out there and meet some new people. Um, examine the energies that you're partaking with. This is a cycle of feasting and fasting and enjoying for Libra. So since you're having such a good cycle, Libra, um, and Uranus is in Aries, so you're really, I'd say Libras are examining their partnerships most of all. If you're a Scorpio, Scorpios are in the north part of the medicine wheel. What buffalo is the totem? This is about your sacred alchemy. This is about Holy Ghost. This is about this is about your elders, your ancestors, all of those people that had blood, sweat, and tears before you in your DNA lineage. If you're a star seed, you're going to find that you're feeling like that there's ultra terrestrial. Did you hear that one? Not extra. Ultra terrestrial vibrations are coming through for you, kind of like that ancient alien show. You know, it's an ancient alien theorized. So for you, Scorpios, there's like a multidimensional thing going on with you. And I and I feel and I know a success for Scorpios. Six months from now, you Scorpios that have been waiting since 2012, waiting since 2012 to reinvent yourself in your lives, it happens as you go into 2017. It happens. This Your rocket's already up there on its journey. Sagittarius, we briefly touched on Sagittarius and Gemini because those are brothers in the Zodiac seeking their uh, power through what they learn, what they say, how they teach, how they tell the story. Sagittarius is a storyteller. I just want you to listen to them tell the story and they need to be inspired. So Sagittarians are coming to deciding exactly what their spiritual philosophical boots are going to be and they're tying the laces. Yeah. Sagittarius are like, you know what? We may not see eye to eye. We may not have the same philosophical outreach. We may not be able to cohabitate because it, it, when we cohabitate, it's a house divided. But you know what? I respect your right for freedom of truth and purpose, but I'm probably not going to just hang out with you in my house because it's so 180 degrees and, and it's too much. It's too much work. You know, it's like cancers when, when relationships become working a work all the, not a work in progress, but constant work just to keep the calm. And I'm going to quote my, one of my Tennessee memoisms. She used to say to me when I was little, Merlin, because my name's Mary Lynn, Merlin. So I was called Merlin way back then. I just didn't recognize it. I didn't see it as M-E-R-L-I-N. She said, you know, when you have to work all the time at making something work, it ain't working. That's Sagittarius. That is so true, isn't it? Yeah. And she was a Pisces, Roxanne, a mm. March 4th Pisces. Yep. That makes sense. Yeah. Hey, Mama. Thanks for the heavenly advice. Nice. If you're a Capricorn, deep, deep mysteries. I believe that Capricorns are unlocking certain inhibitions that were visited upon them by habit, by psychological subconscious patterns that were around them in their early environments. I see a lot of Capricorns getting free. And I, I want to say for you Capricorns, this is a month you're going to take risk. You're going to take sensual risk and flirtatious risk and financial risk. Capricorns are wanting to find a, a safe platform they can invest their energies into and they want to dance and they want to play and they want to frolic. Capricorn's the most serious sign. I mean, it's business up front, party in the back with the Capricorn. But this is a time where they're wanting to party and examine those options about, well, what, how do I play now? Am I such an adult? Am I such an old soul in a, in a younger body that I've forgotten about too much work makes Jack a dull boy. Yeah, so you Capricorns need to lighten it up. Two more signs. Aquarius, you're in your west gate on the medicine wheel. If you're an Aquarian or you have an Aquarian rising or a moon sign in Aquarius, it's sunset time. So it's what does that mean? Bear is the autumn and the west main totem. And, and different tribes have different animal totems, but the most common known is the bear. 
the bear of autumn going into hibernation. It's about to be a hibernation season for the season of autumn. Aquarius is a winter sign. The electricity of winter is Aquarius. So Aquarius, you're at the sunset table. You're setting the table at sunset going into twilight. This is about who do you want to share your bread with and your wine with? What's the partnerships that you enjoy right now? A lot of Aquarians are expressing to me, I feel bored. I feel like I need to be doing more. Aquarians have a hard time doing nothing. They have a hard time just gearing down, similar to their other air brother sign, Gemini. That they're, they're crowding up their schedules too much and they're exhausting their energy. So for Aquarius, I, I want to say to them, set the table with yourself and someone that you cherish until we get to August the 22nd. Keep setting that table at sunset, even if it's just you. Who's the imaginary mentor Who's the, who's the spiritual connection that you're having dine with you and meditate with you as you drink the wine, as you share the bread, as you put the butter or the hummus on the chip? Who is it that you're inviting to your table of life? Who is it that you'd ride off into the sunset with? This is the only time in 2016 we're going to have the Aquarian full moon. Please make the most of the new moon on August 1st and 2nd. If you're an Aquarius, that's talking about your partnerships. And the focus is on what you want to do with another alongside you as you come to the full moon of the 17th, 18th. Last but not least, our, our final 12th medicine sign of Pisces. Pisces, it's been said about Pisces that one of the reasons that Pisces will go into a self-chosen solitude mode or move away from the busy malls or the crowded traffic or the ever-chattering incessant people all vying for attention, is that Pisces and Cancer and Scorpio, there used to be a gum that was kind of called juicy fruit. And the water signs are like those ripe plums or figs on the tree. You know, they're, they're when people sit back going, oh, look at that, look at that, the golden delicious peaches are ready in South Carolina and Georgia. So the water signs are like those delicious fruits, and they need a cycle to ripen. They need a cycle to go from the blossom to the fruit. And if you pick it too soon... The flavor isn't there. The, the majesty isn't there. And with, and with Pisces, Leo is your sixth house. The sixth house has to do with your soul mission. It has to do with the mercy that you know is a medicine you already carry inside of you. You're the 12th sign. So Pisces is known to feel as an empath other people's pain, even if they're not talking about it. Pisces have to guard their auras and their energy shields because too much of everybody else's angst and anxiety and depression. And, you know, it's like the old Beatles song, don't bring me down. Happiness is a warm gun. So it's a golden slumbers. You know, these are the type of music energies that the Beatles sang about way back when, when they got into meditation that fits Pisces, George Harrison, the most Absolutely. famous Pisces, Beatles. Uh, Paul McCartney, a cancer, juicy fruits. So what's happening is the juicy fruit of Pisces is ripening. As we get to September, your ripening cycle is going to be in September. So this is that point where the peach or the plum is going from green. You know, the fruit's growing, but it's going to turn red or it's going to start to turn the yellow and the orange. So your aura and color magic right now is good for Pisces. Those of you Pisces involved with art, teaching art, photography, looking at the colors that are speaking back to you in your wardrobe or out in nature. It's like, wow, that bougainvillea caught my eye. Or, woo, look at that wisteria over there. Man, I'm drawn to that color that that person just walked by with. Man, that my eyes followed that, and I felt the breeze of that color's energy effects in my soul. So I would suggest for you, Pisces, color is your friend. Be very deliberate to notice what you're feeling when you slip on a certain color. And again, I've taken a trip around the 12 signs of the Zodiac and talked about the effects of Leo. But let's come back to that crystal throne. Let's come back to the seven known colors of our rainbow that we see, the covenant, the bow, and the sun, the sun that shines after that rainstorm. The rainstorm is the water signs, the waterfall, the showers of blessing, cleansing, being baptized, rising up again. Leo is when you're on the beach and you're laying there, and you're at that age where you just want to get that tan. Oh, you can't wait. It's the season. It's summer. You're out of school, and you want to get that tan. And it's real hot for a minute, and then all of a sudden, the cloud cover comes over, and you feel 
how it's not the sun's not blazing on you and then from your toes up to your forehead as that cloud being moves you can feel that sunlight coming on you and you're getting that d3 and you're turning that what color golden you've got the kiss of the sun and you're turning golden brown too much of that your sunburn turning red so it's about monitoring the expression of our will and our energies right now but we are literally biochemical multi-dimensional shimmering rainbows magic wands we have an effect we are affected and it's time for us to be fully cognizant of our presence and the p-r-e-s-e-n-t-s the gifts that we each vitally alive bring into this world we bring the baptism we bring the success we bring the victories it's time for us as roxanne mentioned in the beginning I want to be an energy magic wand medicine woman that brings gifts and frequencies of anybody that I'm around that if I need to set a boundary, oh, trust me, she can. I'm that woman. It's like, no, no, that ain't happening. God don't like ugly. (laughs) So I'm not giving out abuse and I'm not taking it verbally, emotionally, mentally. It's not happening. But it's my responsibility, isn't it? It's my responsibility to cast or to allow or to infect with joy, not a virus that brings someone down, but to be able to be an injection, like a B12 shot, that stimulates and invigorates and excites and brings forth, you're everything you need to be. Let me tell you, let let me be that one that reminds you, you got this, you got this. Just I ask that you choose to summon the energies in conclusion to be the best version of yourself. And if you do that, If you make a decision, I, this day, in this now moment, my beloved, I am that I am all that is. I allow you to imbue me, and I choose in this moment, right now, through my heart and the sacredness of my soul, I now call upon the best version of myself. And so it is, and so it is, so be it. And so it is. That was delicious, Mary. That's the only word I could think of. Delicious. That was Thank awesome. You. Thank, Thank you, Juicy Fruit. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Thank you, Stargazers. I send light and love to you all. If you're hearing our voices, know that there is always hope. Never let go of hope. Hope is an alive. It floats you through anything. You know, your, your head's above water with hope. Faith is what you need to put in your energy tank. And But if you... Move from hateful to grateful. Right away in this day, you'll see a difference. Right now, today, you'll see a difference if you'll move away from any frequencies that are critical or hateful and just move into grateful. Just just go there. Just take that course. I agree. Gratitude. It changes everything. It just, yes. it, it twists it all around and then you come out smiling. It's and as beautiful. it says in the Bible, in the twinkling of an eye, in the twinkling of an eye, that's how fast the alchemy frequency happens in the shift, in the twinkling of an eye. Be that shift. Be that alchemy. Yes. Be the light. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. And thank you to all our listeners. Um, next month, we will have Mary back with us again, hopefully. Yes, Mary? Oh, absolutely. I, I love this frequency of this channel. We love you. So I will say, stay tuned to the frequency, be happy, and remember who you are. Much love from us. Bye.